Yo, hope you're all enjoying this new graphics and things I've got flying about in the background there. Unirock in the chat room. Can't believe it. Holly Nation, Joseph, lots of faces I recognise. Need to give Uni a wrench. Can't be having him without a wrench. So we've got a few stories to get into. Obviously got a live show tonight. I like to get it out of the way early because that way, after the show, I can chill out with Unirock. And if any of these aren't on Unirock's channel, I urge you to get over there right now. He's the dude that basically crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's when it came to that horrible QAnon for yours truly here. And for that, I certainly can't thank him enough. So with that said, we're going to get right into it in just a moment. We've got some CERN news. Can't wait. Been ages since we've had something new about CERN. And also, we're going to take a look at something pretty creepy. And something I think we all need to know about. So, chill out and we'll get right there. Okay, folks, okay, here we go. We are live. And like I say, I'll be live over on Truth Frequency later today. I want to see you all there for the Kev Baker Show. I'm going to have Scotty Lopez on tonight. He is going to be talking about the keto diet. And we're going to be getting into a lot of news and woo as well. And Johnny Whistles is going to be there. I thought Johnny might have been here for tonight's show for the live kind of stream here. I don't want to call it a live dive. That would definitely be stealing off uni. But, um... News Blitz, we'll call it, right? And like I say, we've got some CERN news and we've got something pretty creepy that we really, really need to address sometime really, really soon. But like I say, new CERN news, and this is something I've enjoyed talking about over the years. I've enjoyed working with Anthony Patch, getting to know about this machine that has spawned so many conspiracy theories. Most of them, 99% of them, come from the land of make-believe and way, way beyond. However, there is something below the surface of that science that we see going on at CERN that I think makes it one of the most important subjects, especially if you're into science and the kind of stuff I'm into. It's got to be one of the most important things that's out there today. And, you know, I could talk about CERN every single video and probably get five times the clicks, but I've always said I'll only bring you new stuff when it comes along. And right now, even when there's earthquakes happening, I'm still seeing people saying, oh, that'll be CERN causing that. And it's really, really important to note that right now, CERN is in the middle of an actual shutdown. And it's going to be shut down until the year 2020, when it'll be coming back online. And this document here... All you have to do is type in CERN shutdown. You can get that. It's readily available. And you'll be able to see here from the graphs, the blue means there's a shutdown. And that there's 2019. As you can see, everything, folks, everything has been shut down so they can upgrade the magnets and so that they can basically come back and have more luminosity. They're going to soup it up a little. But that's not the upgrade that we're here to talk about today because wait till you get a load of this. I've heard about the Chinese super collider, stuff like that, and I'd heard talk about this future collider that CERN might be, just might be considering. Well, they've gone way beyond considering it now, folks, because as you can see here, they're going the next step. CERN reveals a plan for a 10 billion next generation particle accelerator, four times the size of the Hadron Collider, and they say it could be completed by 2040. Now, we obviously had them coming out and saying, and we've only got their word to take for it, saying that they had basically proven they had the Higgs boson, the God particle. And that was meant to be the holy grail in particle physics. And one would think, you know, when they'd achieved the powers and the energies required to do that, and they'd actually seen that, proven it, ticked the boxes, what else is there left for them to actually discover? And of course, when they're crashing together these protons, they're really literally recreating the, the very kind of nanoseconds right after that Big Bang, if you believe in the Big Bang. Again, just another theory, right? And I'll be getting into more of this with astrophysicist Brian Keating tomorrow night on the Kev Baker Show. He's literally been trying to look for the radiation that was emitted in the moments after the Big Bang. So if you think they're already capable of doing that at CERN, 
then why the need to go bigger? Why the need to go even more powerful? And it's the power levels that are truly frightening in this because if we just look at some of the key points here, right now the CERN tunnel is 17 miles in diameter, or yeah, it's in diameter, 27 kilometers, okay? This new one, look at this here, 100 kilometer, 100 kilometers in circumference tunnel next to the LHC. Now, I imagine that means what they're going to do is, right now there's a heap of other colliders involved in the LHC. The main ring is just the big game in town, but all of these protons, and you have to appreciate this all just starts off as just like a, a gas canister of hydrogen, and then they take the particles from that, and they put them into a linear accelerator where they strip off the electrons, and that's them down to a hydrogen nuclei ready to get accelerated by more smaller accelerators before going to the big ring. It's almost as if the LHC is going to act as the feeder point for this new accelerator. And I'll show you why I think that in a moment. But it says down here, and this is the bit I really want to bring to you, if we look at a map of it, you've got the LHC here. And this is literally going all the way round the southern part of Switzerland, right down into France. Now, what they need something that size for, we could be here debating that until the cows come home. But one thing Anthony Patch taught me when we were doing all of this, and I urge all of you check out Anthony Patch. I think he's got a live stream now he does every week. He's on Blog Talk Radio, I think. He's the man that knows. He is the first place you should go to for the science of CERN. He's still the best guy I've heard describing it all. And whether you take the same path after that into the religious aspects of what may be going on at CERN, that's irrelevant. Because when it comes to the science of this, what he taught me was, and you can find this out there, the power levels that they generate, when they're smashing these particles, these protons together, You've got to picture it as not just one collision at a time. There are billions and billions upon billions in each of the packets that are being collided. Now, we talk about the luminosity, and literally that's the light coming off the successful collisions. Because as these things are going in there, sometimes they want to collide them straight on. Sometimes they want glancing blows. And also they can analyse, basically, what comes off in the explosion, in the debris from that collision. So what you do when you're doing this is you, you generate energy. And you've heard us talking about tera electron volts, if you've listened to anything from myself and Anthony on CERN. And the magic number is 13 tera electron volts, because at that number, you can literally create something called strangelets. Now, strangelets were something that people used to roll their eyes at, right? Until just recently, we had... It was one of the royal scientists came out in a book talking about various ways the world could end. And in there, he speculated and theorized about something called strangelets. And these are quark gluon condensates, never seen since the moments after the Big Bang. You think of all that heat that was generated there. This is the kind of thing that we're talking about. And these, they say, are the most destructive kind of particles known to man. Now, if you get them at 13 tera electron volts, the LHC currently can do 17 tera electron volts. Brookhaven Laboratory as well, up near New York, it can do well over the 13 because it was the first place to make the strangelets. Well, if we look here, this future collider, the ultimate goal is to provide a 100 kilometer superconducting proton accelerator ring with an energy of up to 100 tera electron volts, meaning an order of magnitude more powerful than the LHC. This comes from the CERN Director of Accelerators and Technology, a guy called Frederick Bordry. And that's over five times the energy levels. Now, when you start to speculate and get a bit more fanciful, and I state right away, you know, speculation comes into a lot of this because... We only know what they're telling us, right? And you hear a lot of talk about maybe the creation of black holes, things like that. 
I wonder, I truly do wonder, you know, if what they've achieved at the LHC to date with the 17 tera electron volts, it's almost as if maybe they've discovered that they need to push the energies higher to achieve whatever it is they may be wanting to achieve. Now, are they wanting to create some kind of black hole at CERN? If black holes are even real, because remember, they're only theoretical. And Stephen Hawkins, somebody who we lost back last year, unfortunately, he was the man that basically made the black hole famous. And even he would have to admit that they've never been recreated in a laboratory. And if they were, not a good idea, right? Because a black hole, as we're told it, uh, nothing can escape that, not even light. So you can see one of these kind of B-movie scenario, kind of doomsday films where, where the world sucks in on itself. Do they really want to be creating something like that? I, I wouldn't think so. It just doesn't make any sense. So what is it they're trying to do? Now, we know they're already trying to open portals to other dimensions, and that sounds absolutely woo-woo crazy stuff, right? I know it does. But you have to appreciate that's not me saying that. That actually comes from the people at CERN themselves. So it's not just me that says this. I'm literally taking it from the scientists themselves. Now, you can, in the chat room, anyone's kind of theory or hypothesis or idea on this, it's relevant because just what on earth do they need to discover that would justify $10 billion plus such a bigger piece of apparatus? Now, you can go really into the metaphysical and the occult side of CERN. And, and never forget, of course, CERN, home of the place where they have the statue of Shiva out in the forecourt. And that that's kind of weird, really, when you think about it. A centre for nuclear research before it became the home of the, the world's largest particle accelerator. And they're paying homage to a Hindu god, Shiva, the god of destruction and creation. And isn't it funny, you know, with the power in there, and I'm not saying that they're going to blow up the world, but when you're recreating the Big Bang, isn't that the ultimate moment of creation? You know, maybe it ends up like one of these Russian doll things where we're literally going to be creating other universes, other bubbles out of whatever they're doing there. Maybe that's how we ourselves came to being, because I certainly don't know how we got here. Not... Absolutely, I can't set anyone down. Nobody can. If anyone tells you they know how everything got in motion here, honestly, folks, run the other way. Definitely don't think it was random. So, you know, what they're doing at CERN, I can't tell you. I really can't. I think it's fascinating that they're going to be doing these upgrades. Is it just somewhere where they're pouring money into? Is it a big con job? Could it be that? I'm definitely open to that at this point. And I get they want to try more explosions. They want to basically, this new one that they're building, it's going to be um, electrons and positrons that they're actually going to be colliding together. Now, that's going to be a major step up in the game because the special run that they've done this year, or sorry, last year, right at the end, they left the electrons attached. And what that does is that, that adds to the energies that come off as the particles are going round the ring. You call them synchrotronic energies. You think of gamma rays, stuff like that. You think of these fast radio bursts that we hear so much about and people say it's alien signals from other planets. In all honesty and realistically, it's probably just actually energies being given off by natural particle accelerators that occur in the universe. That's right, folks. They occur naturally. You think of these quasars and places like that and all the particles that are flying about in there. You think of the rings around some planets as well. You're talking about literal, natural, cosmic particle accelerators. And then they give off these bursts of gamma rays, X-rays, exactly what comes off the main ring at CERN, typically anyway, on a normal run. That's why they've got the cloud experiment where they basically funnel that energy off and it acts as an artificial cosmic ray. So who honestly knows what it is they're doing there? I would love to be able to tell you a really hard and fast kind of um, answer for it right now, but I don't have it. I really don't have it. And hopefully over the months to come, if anything new comes about we can look at, we'll certainly be diving into it. But CERN, 
takes me to another topic that I've been covering for some time, along with Anthony Patch as well. Because when we talked about CERN, we also talked about D-Wave, right? The quantum computers. We always came back to talking about the quantum computers. And that means a character called Geordie Rose. Well, it's Geordie Rose and the rise of the synths that comes next. And I wonder if there's a connection between this story here and where we're going next. We'll be right back, folks. Well, I see, this is where I get confused. I'm not as good as this at watching the chat. Thought you meant this was in this stream. She was in this stream. Right, here we go. Who knows? Who knows? I'll be going into the chat room soon because I've only got a few more things to show you. You're going to absolutely love this or hate it. One of the two. I'm trying to work that one out myself. But this here comes from McMaster Engineering. And that's obviously McMaster University up in Vancouver. And this gentleman here is Gordy Rose. Now, Gordy, Geordie, whatever you want to call him. He is the man behind D-Wave Quantum Computers. He then created the subsidiary con company called Kindred AI. They also have something called Quadrant AI. And they have another company called Sanctuary AI. Now, we hear a lot of talk about robots and lifelike robots and synthetic robots. And now they're basically going to be having a major impact on all of us very, very soon. So many jobs kind of penciled in for being taken over by the robots. And I can see good places, good things that robots could do. I can make a case for them and I can make a case against them. But I really think we need to get ready for the future now because I watch TV shows that have the robots kind of in it and Westworld, we can look at that one. Humans, another one from the UK, very, very relevant to what we're going to be talking about here because humans was looking at a world where synthetic lifelike robots had been integrated into society and they were carrying out jobs like they were being maids, they were maybe being chauffeurs, really like a second class of citizen until one day they became sentient. Now imagine that, a world where you're literally living in amongst these different, these machines, these very lifelike machines. And you might think that is the stuff of like science fiction that I'm into, all the kind of make-believe stuff. Well, why don't you take a close listen to Jordy, and then we're going to take a look at the Sanctuary website because things have changed and they are really up in their game in 2019. And remember, they were only formed last year officially. So take a listen to this. And of course, please, this is fair use. It's only about 30 seconds if you're lucky. McMaster Engineering, check it out. The full video is fascinating. Take a listen to this. And the broad arc of the story I'm going to tell you is about transforming Vancouver into what you can think of as a sanctuary city for this new type of categorical thing. Now, the way to think about what we're trying to do with Vancouver is, say, in this room, if you look to your left and look to your right, I encourage you to do so. <laughs> look at the fellow humans in the room. What we want is for that experience to be such that in Vancouver, one of the two is a synth, no matter where you go. So millions of these machines um, living, working, being in Vancouver as a test bed for the beginnings of a new type of interaction between humans and technology. Yeah, you heard him there, right, folks. He told the people in the auditorium, look to your left and look to your right. Now, these are humans right now, but sometime really, really soon, one of them at least is going to be a synthetic life form. And that's because Sanctuary AI the company that literally say they want to bring the TV show Westworld to life. We've played those clips on the show many times before. I urge you all go back, check out the archive over at TFR. I'm sure some of them are still on the channel after the massive cull. I don't want to get into that tonight. But they literally say in their own words, Dr. Suzanne Gilder, we want to bring Westworld to life. And not only that, it's a bit more like black magic than science right now. You've all heard me playing those clips. And the website they used to have was creepy enough. It started off, it was just like 
down, there was a cellar. You could see an opening up to the outside world and just had sanctuary on it. Nothing else. Couldn't go anywhere. And then it changed. They souped it up a bit and they had the password on it. You had to, password protected. Again, couldn't go anywhere. Not now. Not now. Because they have totally up their game and they are showing us these synthetic life forms that are going to be living all amongst us and if you're in Vancouver this is going to be the test bed for this it truly is and this one here you're looking at it's called Nadine now Nadine looks like she's been kind of posed to look like some kind of I don't know doing some science something like that Nadine has got her own job and I'm not making this up you watch that Geordie Rose video the full presentation She's got her own job. She goes to work at a science park in Vancouver. She's got her own bank account. Uh, yep, she gets paid for her work. Geordie makes a joke about the fact that, obviously, Sanctuary take a big slice of her wages, almost like they're pimping her out, or like she t really is some kind of slave. But we start to scroll down some of the images here, and we're starting to get an idea of just what kind of... Um, Entities, machines are going to be living all amongst us really, really soon. And this isn't science fiction. I really want to get this across. And with the rise of 5G, this is what makes it possible. Because these things will be controlled by AI, obviously. And when you've got this fully immersed 5G system that a lot of cities are going to have very, very soon. I'm in Smart City, Glasgow. It's a no-brainer. It's happening here as I speak. But so many other cities around the world, they're going 5G. And it's not so we can watch Unirock or me or any of the other people that you, you know that we like to view on YouTube. It's not so we can watch that quicker when we're going to work or we're taking a walk to the store or anything like that. They might dress it up as that and they might sell it and package it as that. But it's more to do with the Internet of Things and it's more to do with these things here as well. Augmented reality. That's another thing that's going to be coming sometime very, very soon. But if we look at this here, it says, what does it mean to be human? And we can go to their mission. And well, I've got actually joining me now, maybe, maybe. I'm just going to hang on now. I'm going to add Scotty Lopez into the call. He's going to be my guest tonight anyway. And I'm sure, I'm sure Scotty will... Uh, like to chip in on this. Scotty, Scotty, I'm live on a live stream right now, dude. So, hey, what's up? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. And you joined me at the right time. You really have, because I was just about to touch on that creepy sanctuary website, dude. It's the one we looked at the other yeah. night. The one that used to be password protected, right? I mean, this now... I was playing a little bit of the clip where Jordy Rose was telling people that in Vancouver there's going to be millions, literally millions of these synthetic lifelike robots wandering about, doing jobs, and he was telling people, look left, look right. Humans just now, but sometime very soon, one of those will be a synthetic. And I was just trying to get across to the audience, you know, that this isn't science fiction, this is the way it's going, and the 5G, a big part of it, right? Wouldn't you think? Definitely. It's definitely a part of it. And yeah, I mean, if, if you have, for those of you out there who have not seen the Sanctuary AI website, you have to check that out because, I mean, those people really are on the cutting edge of whatever they're working on with all of that, uh, you know, robotic life form mentality, transhumanist stuff going on. It's like, whoa, it, it's crazy. It's, um, it's a lot closer than I think we have uh, anticipated. And I'm taking the, the audience now to the gallery. This is where you get to see all their images. And it used to be there was only one or two images, and somebody in the chat room was asking, so you can actually get here now without the password, and that is absolutely correct. Um, yep. says, but their mission statement doesn't answer what does it mean to be human, and that's from UniReach in the chat room. You know, this is the thing, they honestly believe, and I've been following Jordy Rose for some time, and he thinks, you know, the best way to achieve consciousness, a true sentience in these machines, is for them to be living in the real world, 
experiencing all of the kind of data that we experience, touch, all, all of our senses, same things. If they can recreate that as much as possible, he thinks that will be that divine spark that brings about the consciousness. And like I say, I've followed him through Kindred. That, that's where basically he talks about raising the robots and the AI as if they're children, Scott. And now they create this company just last year in 2018. And we've spoke about it a lot, but these things are really ready for the off. And I'm sure people, right, who are into the old conspiracy, as we both are, they'll be looking at this image that I've got on the screen now. And they've just happened to pose the robot doing the kind of devil horns, the bull horns kind of thing. You know, the one that people freak out about when they see the, the famous people doing it, Scott. It's almost as if they're baiting us into talking about it this way. Well, definitely. I mean, you know, they, they have to let you know what they're doing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's just crazy. It's just crazy the point where we're at right now where we're already seeing this. And, you know, if they're coming out and talking about it to the public, then how long have they really had it? You know, that's the big question. How long has this really been going on? Because they don't just roll this stuff out to us without utilizing it for themselves for quite a while, you know? Exactly, Scott. I'm just scrolling down some of these pictures here. I'm going to look at the the chat, see if anything's happening in there, because I don't want to keep people too long, because myself and Scott are going to be going live soon anyway, over on Truth Frequency Radio, tfrlive.com. And Scott, you're going to be talking all about the keto diet, right? At least these robots don't need to worry about going on a diet just yet. Surely we're not going to have to feed them, dude. <laughs> I, I guess that would be the one benefit of uh, being a robotoid, I guess. <laughs> you don't have to worry about going on diets or anything like that. Anytime anybody says robotoid, I automatically think of Jimmy Jeans. But look, folks, I mean, you can tell me what you think. This character here is called Olivia Norton. I've got, well, I've tried to approach her to come on the show because she seems to be the most kind of down to earth kind of not really um, talking about black magic and all that. And I want to get her take on, on these robots because I'm fascinated by them. And whether you like them, whether you hate them, they're going to be coming a part of our lives sometime very, very soon. And, you know, Scott, I was talking about the TV show Humans that we had over here in the UK. And it was almost like they were a, an underclass, you know. You could buy one to do your housework, do all the kind of horrible chores, all that kind of stuff. And it was only when they became sentient that that was the whole kind of purpose of the show, what would happen and things. But it's almost as if that TV show, and we call them programs, but it's almost as if they've been working with Sanctuary, Jordy Rose and these people because the scenario that was in that, it's, it almost feels uncannily like the scenario that we're seeing playing out now in Vancouver. Yeah, it's almost like a revelation of the method, right? And so <laughs> uh, you see that there was this run of TV shows that were geared towards that whole thing, right? Uh, the one you just mentioned was a humans. You've got Westworld. Um, you've got, you know, probably what, two or three other prob probably really big sci-fi sort of series that all kind of touch upon the same topic you know so it, it does make you wonder if it was something that they're pushing out to the population you know to get people used to it to talking about ai and sentient robots and and all of that stuff and already thinking about the ethical questions and stuff like that because they raise all of that in these shows you know so it's to get the population primed and already talking about it that way, when it rolls out, everybody knows, you know, what to do already. <laughs> no, <you're laughs> They've already been programmed. Yeah, you're programmed, literally. No, you're absolutely right. And I think it's never been so obvious as with the timing of the new kind of version of Westworld, humans, and what we're seeing coming from Jordy Rose, Olivia Norton, and the uber creepy, but highly, highly intelligent Dr. Suzanne Gilder. 
There's another character, Holly Peck, that works for them as well. There she is there. If you watch her on Twitter, you, it's no wonder people like myself and others out there end up saying that there's more magic and occult stuff going on than actual science because she is one really, really strange character. Well worth looking into. But what do you people out there think? Because I'm going to go into the chat room quickly before we wrap this up. Can't believe we've seen Unirock and Unireach in the chat. That absolutely makes my day. I know it'll make Scotty's day as well. Because like I was saying at the start of the stream, you know, Scott, we used to make fun of QAnon, right? We used to laugh. I used to say it was in Cheyenne Mountain. It, it was part of some kind of AI setup they had. Maybe it was even coming from CERN at one point. But we always used to laugh at it. And we never used to be able to put yeah. our finger on why. Why it was BS. We, we couldn't prove it to anyone. And then, you know, it was like almost this YouTube channel came out of the mist. And here he was, Unirock, who, like I say, he dotted the I's, crossed the T's. And still to this day, he's having to go over all of that information. And anytime I'm trying to remind anyone that it's a heap of crock, I'm having to go over that information. And I still can't believe that well over a year later now, Scott, this thing's still rolling, man. It's crazy. It, it, it's crazy, and I still see people that should know better. You know what I mean? They should know better. Still, they do still, know better. Yeah, they do. Yeah, at this point, you know they know better. But it, it is crazy to see that it's still going on. <laughs> They're still rolling with it. No, exactly. It's like you know. I even said at the start of this one when I was talking about CERN, I could make videos about CERN every day. And my channel would explode because it's one of those topics that people just can't hear enough about, okay? But I would feel wrong if I was having to regurgitate the same stuff, put a different spin on it, a different angle on it, just to go chasing views, Scotty. And that's why I was all excited today because we had a bit of new news. They're going to be building a 100-kilometer circumference ring. <laughs> I know, by the year 2040. What they need it for, I don't know. But that, I think that's the appeal with the, the channels still posting about QAnon. They know they're going to get 10 times the hits than this will get. Any other video will get. Yeah. Yep. It's uh, it's become quite the uh, business endeavor for these people, hasn't it? You know what? I, I bet you, right? I bet you. And I'm not going to, but I bet you if I was to just make a video tomorrow go all soy boy sather or praying medic and sit there and analyze a Q post. I bet you they would readily accept me in, into the mix. They absolutely would, because if they're that brainwashed by now, all I would need to say is George Soros, he stopped paying me and I've come back from the dark side and now I realize, I realize the error of my ways. Q's real and uh, I'm there. They, they, would, they, they would lap <laughs> it up, dude. They wouldn't even question it. They don't question anything else, right? Exactly. Hmm. Maybe we'll try it. No, we, give, no, we won't give, try it. No, we won't try it. But we'll go into the <laughs> chat room. It says here, I used to work at the Francis Crick Institute Biomedical Genetics. It's basically a hellhole of social, social justice feminist warriors. <laughs> Entitled people scrambling for funding. So sad. Isn't that the way the world so these I, days? I, I would not want a bunch of radical feminists playing around with genetics. Just saying. No, absolutely not. And while we're here and before we go, I have to ask you on air. I mean, um, your thoughts about the Gillette advert, Scott? As you can see, I am uh, donning a new thicker growth today because I refuse to use that piece of Gillette crap that I've got in my toilet. And I won't be buying any other stuff anymore because I am one of those toxic males. I'm old school, Scotty. I was one of their customers that they literally abused in a video yesterday. Did you catch any of that, man? I, I have not got a chance to look at the commercial, but I have seen all of the um, uproar around it. So I'm assuming it probably was a pretty, pretty uh, cringy slice of social justice. I'm telling uh, you, dude, I was almost thing. reaching. I was almost reaching for the hacksaw to take my own testicles off. I was feeling that much male guilt at just being, you know, afflicted by having testicles. That's how bad it made me feel, Scott. It's all my fault. It's all your fault. 
it, it's your white privilege, Kev. I know. You know, it's shining through. But <laughs> you know, it's got people. It's got guys in the street. You've got one guy sees a really attractive female passing him in the street, dressed nice, really attractive, uh, and he kind of he he looks at her, he gives her the eye, as we would say over here in Scotland. And they make out this is some big major crime. One of his friends jumps on him. Oh, whoa, 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 you can't be doing that. Don't look at women. Come on, man. What are you, some kind of some kind of caveman? That's the kind of crap we're talking about, Scott. He's got two young boys fighting with each other. One of them says, well, boys will be boys. <sighs> can't he be saying things like that? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I guess it's time for everyone to go to a, a chick razor. Anything other than them. And I was listening to Uni <laughs> last night, and he's got it sussed, man. He calls it Get Woke, Go Broke. And that is definitely a company that is going to go broke on the back of it. Because imagine targeting your main audience, your main customers. Must make up 99% of their customer base, Scott. And instead thinking it's going to be a good idea to virtue signal to all these weaponized militant feminists and the social justice warriors who, if you check I mean, out historically, never tend to shave. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I mean, wasn't their tagline, you know, Gillette, the best a man can get. I think it even but, says on that but, advert, is this really the best a man can get? And it goes into play. Wow. It goes so they even they even decided to like slap their own yeah. audience in the face by like crapping on their own. It's bad, dude. Tagline. It, it's wow. So, it's so bad. It's like telling, say, it was like ma mainly middle aged guys that bought a certain type of car. It's like that car company saying, "All you middle aged guys that buy this product, you are absolute animals. You're the scum of the earth." Everyone should hate on you. You should all feel guilty. It's never a good. It's never a good move in the business world, dude. To start really going after the people that put you where you are, right? Yeah, maybe maybe they think that they're going to try some kind of like reverse psychology judo or whatever, but I don't think that that's working very well. Exactly, dude. Exactly. But folks, listen. Myself and Scotty, we need to go and prepare. We need to get ready. We have got a show on tonight. No, just a quick look at the the chat here. It says, Jennifer. Jennifer's in there. Apparently the woman who produced the commercial was one of the fools that helped demonize the Boy Scouts. Now that there, Jennifer, would make a heck of a lot of sense. And I really need to get you on the Kev Baker show. I need to get Uni back on as well. You know, a lot of other people I see in the chat room. We've got Glow. Check out Glow's YouTube channel. Just give Glow a hammer while we're here, Scott. And uh, yeah. We're going to be talking about the keto diet. We're going to be getting into a lot of woo in hour two. With Johnny Whistles, he'll be coming along as well. So um, I urge you all, head on over to tfrlive.com forward slash chat. You can all join in the chat room there or you can hear us on iHeartRadio, TalkStream Live. And I just want to appreciate everybody for jumping in tonight. Glow's 40 minutes late. That's okay. That's cool. We're just about to kind of wind down here go live on the radio and then hopefully I'm hoping Uni Rock will be live when I come off there because um oh well tonight Scott we might even be doing a bit of gaming are we not? Uh whatever you want to do, Kev. Uh I'm down for a little bit of a little bit of gaming if you want to do that. Well, I think we could do a bit of gaming, yes. Might have some Uni Rock piping in, in the background. Ring of Elysium liking that. But listen folks, if you want to see the gaming I won't do it on the main channel because I got absolutely attacked by my subscribers last time. For some reason,